Hey, what's going on? Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear right me? All right. I can hear you. Perfect. I love your lighting. Awesome. Oh, thank you. It looks great. Yeah. So how are you? <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Thank you. I just woke up probably about 45 minutes ago having oh, my really? coffee. Yeah, <laughs> feeling good. Where are you in the world? I am in Brisbane in Australia, so on the East okay. Coast. Very cool. What time is it there? It is 9.30 a.m. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, well, thanks again for doing this. We really appreciate it. Um, our uh, podcast is... Of course. Our podcast is about your uh, journey in the music industry, um, informing Cub Sport and how you kind of got to where you are today. Cool. Cool. Yeah. So are you born and raised in Brisbane? Pretty much. I was actually born in New Zealand in a town called Dunedin. Okay. And my family moved to Brisbane when I was like six weeks old. And I've been here ever since. Oh, okay. <laughs> So, yeah, pretty much born and raised in Brisbane. Sure, sure, sure. (laughs) How did you get into music originally? Um, My mom played the piano and a bit of guitar when I was little, and I used to really love that. So when I was like six, I think she said I could get piano lessons too if I wanted to. And so I started, and, yeah, I just got really obsessed with I guess learning piano and uh, around the same time I got really obsessed with like pop music and watching um, Rage which is kind of like it was like MTV um, here in Australia like the free to wear uh, MTV yeah I, I remember I've seen the name like on YouTube and stuff like uh, old mm-hmm. videos I'll see it but yeah and then I kind of just I played piano all through school and then I started singing when I was like 14 and then I started writing songs and then yeah I kind of just never stopped Mm -hmm. wow so 14 you're writing songs did you start like a band or anything in school yeah I had a band with a few of my friends I think when I was like 15 or something um but like we didn't actually do anything we we like played songs together but never had like a gig or anything sure sure yeah (laughs) when was the first time that you had it like a gig what was your first experience playing music in front of people or stuff that you've written um i played at this fundraiser um and yeah i think i think i was 17 and that was the first time that i'd like played my own songs in front of people and yeah I and I play I remember playing an image and heap cover at that as well um but then my first time playing like with the band that we have now um was at this little venue called the hive here in Brisbane and it doesn't exist anymore but it's just like this tiny little room um at a PCYC it was like a gym that had like an upstairs room that had gigs in it sometimes but yeah we played our first show there it would have been like 11 years ago or something now oh my gosh wow yeah Uh (laughs) (laughs) and how did you meet the people uh that you ended up forming your band with originally Um, Well, Sam and I went to school together. We were in the same grade and Zoe was in the grade below us at the same school. And Uh, yeah, my brother and Zoe's brother were best friends. So we like, we knew of each other, but we weren't actually friends until after school, we started playing music together and um, we knew Dan through other school friends. So all kind of just through high school and high school friends. Wow. And then you wrote like a solo record, right? In the beginning, it started just as Tim Nelson and the and the Cub Scouts, right? Yeah. So that was that was like the same people. There were a couple more of us back then, but okay. um, Sam, Zoe, Dan and I were all there on that, like that little EP. And then, yeah, we like we released our first official EP in 2012. And we changed our name from Tim Nelson and the Cub Scouts to just Cub Scouts. 
Uh huh. Um, and then the next year we released another EP and Scouts Australia told us that we needed to um, take the word Scout out of our name. That's, so that's funny. We, so so yeah. they, they actually, you guys got, you know, started getting enough attention to where the Scouts of Australia had to <laughs> shut you down. <laughs> yeah, I think we were like the top Google result in Australia or something. Um, oh, really? Mm, so then we changed the name to Cub Sport and then... Yeah, we we put out our first release as Cub Sport, like our debut album in 2016. Oh, wow. So not too long ago then. Mm. Wow. Okay, so so you put out the the first EP release was just yourself and the Cub Scouts was the original one. Then you just went by the Cub Scouts, mm-hmm. had to change your name. <laughs> and then you put yeah. out your first full length as Cub Sport. Mm-hmm. And what and has this all been done independently, or did you have like a record label? Like, tell me how about how you, um, kind of were able to yeah. sort stuff out with the with Scouts Australia. So we put out the um the first couple of EPs independently, and mm-hmm. we were self managed at the very start, and then brought on management um, around the time of the second EP so we had we had like a legal team and managers who helped us navigate the um the situation with Scouts Australia (laughs) and then we signed a record deal um shortly after that and that was like the label that we put out our first album through um and then yeah we kind of felt really strongly that for our second album we should go back to being self-managed and put it out through our own label because um in 2016 Sam and I both came out as queer and admitted that we were in love with each other and I kind of been writing about that whole situation through throughout those years because there was there were a lot of delays with putting the debut album out Mm -hmm. so I actually wrote most of that in like 2014 and then through 2015 and 2016 I was like slowly coming to terms with the fact that I was in love with Sam and we we grew up in like pretty religious households and like went to christian school and everything so there was a lot of internalized homophobia and just a lot of fear and shame around that to work through so i was kind of like coming to terms with that and writing all about it i thought i was being um i I thought i was keeping it under wraps but sam was like i was like hearing the songs you're writing and like he knew exactly what was going on um (laughs) so then he he like finally (laughs) <laughs> brought it up with me and we were like yeah okay let's let's be together um, yeah so yeah I was like it was that second album kind of like told all oh, my dogs just come down here oh <laughs> <laughs> my dog's in the other room <laughs> oh cute um but yeah so that second album just like it felt so personal and like so important to us and so we really felt like we needed to kind of like hand pick the team that we were going to be working on it with. And Mm -hmm. um, so we kind of, yeah, went back to it being just us and then started reaching out to publicists and um, we managed to pull together like a really amazing team who understood our vision. And um, yeah, we've, kind of we've been releasing through our label cub sport records ever since and wow. we're still self-managed very cool wow yeah. what a i'm sure that had to be a pretty amazing moment once you finally like you know were able to talk to sam and get everything out there and how you both kind of felt the same way that's pretty mm-hmm. that's really surreal i mean what a what <laughs> yeah. are the odds you know what i mean that's pretty that's cool yeah it's quite incredible and then we got married like two years ago oh wow Um, congratulations 
thank you. And so then our third album was kind of, I was kind of writing that throughout the time that we got engaged and Mm -hmm. there were like, it it kind of felt like Cub Sport was starting to like take off in a way that it hadn't really done before. And there was kind of like more, we was starting to tour internationally pretty regularly. And yeah, that's, and then, yeah, now we're about to put out the fourth album. Your fourth album. album. Wow. (laughs) So between the first album you said was out on a label and then the second record bats, that's the one that you were kind of writing about Sam kind of, and he was kind of figuring it out at that point. Yeah. Okay. And then Cubs, the self-titled record was the first one that was, that was the, the change. Is that what you said? Yeah, it was like that. That was the first album that I'd written entirely on the other side of coming out. Okay. So I think I went into writing all of those songs kind of feeling um, just like a, a lot more free. And um, I think I I held like a lot less fear around what people were thinking of me and that kind of thing. And with um, like, what was the, tur- do you know, can you pinpoint like a specific like turning point in the band, like where you saw you know, real, you know, change in like popularity or streams or people coming to your shows? Yeah, we've kind of, it feels like every album has kind of had like a song or a moment that has sort of, it's just, it feels like it's been like a pretty steady build. Um, On our first album, we had a song called Come On Mess Me Up that, Mm -hmm we put out as the third single. And that was kind of against the advice of our team that we had around us at the time. But it was a song that we felt very passionately about. And the label, they wouldn't release any funds to do a music video. It kind of felt like everyone was like, this is done, just like (laughs) forget about it. Right. Um, So we made a music video for it with one of our friends, Joe, and we just shot it in our living room. I think we spent like a hundred dollars on hiring lights and that was like, that was the video, but we put that up um, a couple of months after the album came out and it had been pretty quiet, like in the lead up to the album and the album coming out. But when we put out that video, the song got added to um, Triple J, our like national youth broadcaster here in Australia Wow. And it really connected with a lot of people. And um, it ended up getting into Triple J's Hottest 100 of that year, which is kind of like it had it had always been a dream for us, but always felt kind of impossible with, the, with our situation. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, people started coming to our shows here in Australia. And um, that kind of felt like, the first sort of breakthrough Mm -hmm. um and then on our second album like it was about a year after we had put the album out we made a music video for one of the songs called hawaiian party um with um youtubers ethan and grayson dolan um so they we didn't realize but they're like they'd been cub sport fans for a while and oh, wow. one day, yeah, one day Grayson DM'd me and I like, I hadn't heard of them yet. I think I'd like seen them on like my, I'd seen them on socials, like popping up and stuff, but I didn't really know like what they did or anything. Mm-hmm. And yeah, then um, we invited them along to our LA show. And I kind of, before we played one of our songs off Bats called Crush, I kind of like, told Sam's in my story because the song Crush is about like the night that we finally had the conversation Mm -hmm. and they were really inspired by that and um, wrote this idea for a music video that was kind of like um, three couples and it's like all about like inclusivity and love is love and um, yeah so we shot that music video for the song Hawaiian Party and it like 
it kind of like exploded. It it got like I think like three million views in the first day, and whoa, we were in like the Billboard um, like next big sound chart or something, and it was mm-hmm. like charting. It was in like the viral fifties on Spotify, like all around the world, and like in the iTunes charts and stuff. And we saw like a huge spike in all of our like socials and that sort of thing. So that was a pretty huge moment for us, especially wow. in the US. Um, but yeah, and then and then we put out our third album kind of like just off the back of that because uh-huh. I sort of, I had it ready to go and we thought we'd kind of wrapped up the Bats album campaign and then um, the Hawaiian party video happened and it kind of just like boosted things to a whole new level kept it going kept that second record kind of going Mm -hmm. wow and it was that the how did you get like what when was the first time you guys toured and stuff like outside of uh australia um so in 2016 we did a u.s tour and um, we played some shows in the uk as well again that was kind of against the advice of our team they're like you've got nothing going on like it's a waste of money um so they like <laughs> they didn't want to release our tour funds so we just like paid for it ourselves oh my gosh and, um and then it was at the end of that tour that it was like the last night of that tour when sam and i finally had the conversation oh cool um, were you in so, the yeah. united states when it happened um, we were in Vancouver. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so it kind of, there there have been a few moments like that where we've sort of just had to like keep believing in ourselves and like follow our gut. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, it, it hasn't really let us down so far. That's good. When you toured here in the States, did you... Like how would you, how'd you put that tour together? Did you have another band you were going with or like, how did you, would you um, book a whole different country? We, had, or? we have, we'd had a booking agent in the U S um, who came on board around the time of our second EP. Oh, okay. um, and yeah, he's like, he's always been a big champion of ours. And so when we said that we wanted to do this tour, he was like, yeah. And like booked it. And it was kind of a, mixture of like club shows support slots and um just like some little headline shows as well wow that's yeah. cool was it was that yeah. your first experience here in the united states um no we played at cmj in 2013 um oh okay so yeah and we did we played a couple of shows um on the east coast and the west coast i think it was like a four or five um date kind of like just one-off shows um in 2014 just after we signed with the label oh cool yeah so we've kind of been like in and out um but then from 2016 like we've toured the u.s twice in 2018 and then again in 2019. And we would have just finished another US tour now um, if COVID oh. hadn't happened. Was this record, like, did you record this record? Was it any different than the first or the previous albums? Um, it was a little, yeah. I, I wrote and recorded most of it, like, right here in this room. Um, oh, really? Yeah. Did, what about the and, previous albums? Were they done in, in your house too? kind of like half here and then um half with one of my friends who's a producer here in brisbane as well um but yeah i guess the the period that i wrote this album through was full of non-stop touring and promo and stuff and so it was sort of like the the moments that we had at home i was kind of like it was kind of my way of processing everything that was happening and kind of like trying to stay connected with myself through, I I feel like I was borderline like burnt out and we had kind of just been like going as hard as we could for years. 
I think after um, we had the delays putting out our first album when we were with a label, mm -hmm. since then we've just been like, well, now we're in control of the timeline and like we've got this music here that we want to put out and just like keep like going. Um, and so I feel like, yeah, this this album, it, it's funny because it's like, I guess, when you're a musician, writing and recording music is like part of your job, but it also kind of becomes a way for me to like process and deal with and like, um, yeah, it's like, it's like my, it's like my release as well as mm -hmm. being my work, which is like kind of weird, but yeah. So it's kind of like my release for like everything that was happening and kind of like, um, staying, staying connected. Nice, nice. Mm -hmm. And the first, the you've put out two songs so far from the from the record, right? Drive uh, three, three now. Um, oh, three. Confessions, drive, and I feel like I am changing. Well, the first one you put out was Confessions. Mm -hmm. Why was that the first single you chose? Do you remember? Um. I think I was just so excited for people to like hear such a different sound from us. I, it was one of the last songs that I wrote that went on the album. Um, I think I wrote it in like November last year. And that was one where I, I was just feeling kind of like weird and frustrated and um, I think like, burnt out and kind of just a bit disconnected and I like couldn't couldn't quite like figure out why I was feeling like that um mm -hmm. and then I was in here recording and then I was just holding this mic like this and um kind of just like s like saying and singing like whatever popped into my head and then when I listened back to it I realized that I'd like perfectly articulated all of the things that were kind of like making me not feel good, like all the things that I was too scared to like really admit to myself or say out loud. Mm -hmm. So it felt like a huge release to me. And um, like sonically, it just like excites me so much. Um, there's like a, a section at the end uh that kind of gets pretty like abrasive and chaotic but it's like it's still really beautiful like it's got like these like really lovely organs and Sam Zoe and I recorded like choir parts through there so I feel like it's um yeah I, it's just like really exciting to me and that was one song that I like just couldn't wait for people to hear awesome very cool so how, like, I know you said you're supposed to be on tour for the new record. Like, have you guys been doing anything like the Instagram live stuff? Are you doing any of that? Yeah, we did quite a few of those towards the start of the isolation period. Mm -hmm. um, and we're working on um, kind of like a higher production live video playing the album start to finish. Oh, wow. Um, so yeah so we're shooting that next week we we like didn't think that we'd be playing the songs live for quite a while um and then a couple of weeks ago we decided that we wanted to do this like live album video start to finish and so we've spent the last few weeks learning how to play the album live and it's really exciting it, like it feels incredible playing the songs live so it's just making me so excited for when we can actually like play shows. Um, sure. But in the meantime, I think like doing this live video is going to be really fun. That's cool. That is cool. I know it's, I mean, obviously nobody imagined we'd be in this situation that we are in, but I feel like because it's going on so long, it's like even artists are kind of getting burnt out on doing the, the live videos, you know, it's like, you got to even, mm -hmm expand your creativity and the next step further because it's yeah. like what's next you know it's crazy uh -huh. lots of adjustments 
Oh yeah. Does that, I mean, you, I know you guys already pushed the record back, but are you okay with releasing it during the quarantine? Yeah. I like, I feel like now is the right time for it. Like once we made the decision to push it back to July 24, because it was originally coming out um, around the start of May. Mm -hmm. And I think we made the decision just a couple of weeks out to push it back. And I like felt like peaceful about that. And now that it's like getting towards the time, like I'm feeling like more excited about the album than I have the whole time. And I'm just like, it, it just feels like it is the right time. Awesome. Really exciting. So about two weeks now, the new, the new record will be out. Mm-hmm. Well, dude, thank you so much for chatting with me today. I really appreciate it. Um, My pleasure. Thank you. I, yeah. I have one more question. I want to know if you have any advice for aspiring artists. I would say always follow your gut and I would just always make sure that you're making something that you love and that you believe in. Cause I feel like if you're doing that, then you can't fail. Cause if you're creating something that you love, then like you've already won. Bring it back,